Hey, what is going on everybody? It is your boy Lycan AK here, back with another Battlefield video for you guys today. If you are just as hyped as I am, you are aware that the Battlefield 1 DLC is just a few hours away, and by a few hours, I probably really mean like about 14 hours away, assuming that the DLC is going to be releasing at midnight all across the East Coast from my end. So if you're like me, you all want to know exactly what's going to be included in this DLC patch known as They Shall Not Pass, which is releasing tomorrow for everybody. We can expect to see four brand new new maps, all of which I am extremely excited for, one specifically being Fort Vox, which is a brand new Operation Metro 1918 version. This map is an absolute meat grinder, guys. You can expect to see some high scoreline gameplays from me, nothing but PTFO and just absolutely annihilating the other team with regular guns. I am so excited for this map. Next up, we're going to have basically a new game mode called Frontlines Game Mode, which is a mix of Conquest and Rush. I will certainly be bringing you guys some gameplay of that once the DLC becomes available. Uh, I did get a chance to actually try this on the CTE servers, but unfortunately it was kind of... I'm, I'm still trying to work out the bugs with my recording on my PC. It can run it, it's just having some trouble trying to actually figure it out. Uh, next up we have the Steel Behemoth, the Char 2C tank. Absolutely that's one of the best tanks I ever seen in the game, honestly. It uh, tanks a lot of damage, deals a ton of damage, but at the same time, if you're at the driver's seat, it does have a pretty slow rate of fire. And we're going to be going over the DLC weapons next, and also, lastly, we'll be going over some of the new patch notes that we can expect to see in this coming DLC. Included in the DLC, we also have a new Trench Raider Elite class. This thing is probably one of the most lethal Elite classes I have ever seen in Battlefield 1. Probably even more lethal than the uh, the one with the LMG or the one with the flamethrower. Those are two very good uh, elite classes as well. But this one, this is just all about clearing house. It really is just going to be such an absolute powerhouse, especially for uh, some of the maps with heavy and in heavy infantry and lots of trenches. So I know a lot of people want to know how to unlock the DLC weapons. Within this DLC, we're going to see four brand new weapons, two of which are actually variants. Or actually, we're just going to have eight new weapons, so I don't confuse you guys. It's going to be eight brand new DLC weapons, two for each class. Starting off with the assault class, we have what's known as the Shorgan Inertial Factory, which is a uh, brand new shotgun for the class, a uh, semi-automatic shotgun, Swedish design, and there are actually challenges to unlock these weapons. As expected, Battlefield 4 had the same exact thing. Uh, slightly more difficult from my knowledge though, but you're gonna have to perform 50 kills with the Model 10A Slug and in a round you're gonna have to perform 15 kills with the M97 Trench Gun Hunter. Very easy if you ask me, the Model 10 Slug is an absolute powerhouse if you know how to use it, however you will have to be very accurate with that gun and I know a lot of people are probably wondering, do you have to complete the Model 10 Slug before you move on to the M97 Challenge? No you do not, you can complete these in any succession or you can do whichever one you prefer first. Moving on to the next weapon, we have the Riberolis 1918 Factory, which is a carbine version, uh, very similar to the MP18, but a much higher damage model, 25 bullets in the round, and you're going to have to perform 50 kills with the Automatico Factory to get this gun, and also perform 20 headshots with the MP18 Optical. The 50 kills with the Automatico is very easy, however getting 20 headshots with the MP18 Optical is just an absolute annoyance. I'm not going to say it's hard, because headshots are pretty random in this game, but that's what makes it that's what makes it a lot more difficult in my opinion, is the fact that the headshots are such a hit or miss. I can get 3 headshots in a row with the MP18 and all of a sudden the last shot is a body shot and it doesn't turn out to be a headshot so you will struggle with this one but I guarantee you you guys will get it done it took me about an hour to unlock this gun but uh, you guys will probably do it maybe quicker than me maybe longer it really depends on your uh, play style and your accuracy but overall a very good weapon I strongly recommend you guys try this weapon out uh, however it does have a lot of visual recoil but it kicks up uh, pretty much above it doesn't kick anywhere to the left or right so definitely an absolute powerhouse weapon give it a shot once you unlock it moving on to the medic class we have the RSC 1917 optical an absolute let me tell you about this gun alright this gun is potential this gun has serious potential alright we're talking two shot kill at almost every single range however the trade-off for this weapon is that you do have an extremely low rate of fire 
but at the same time, you also only have six bullets in the mag, so that's a potential for a three-shot kill, granted that you have 100% accuracy, which I know I don't even have. So you're going to want to be really reloading this gun after every single kill. You don't want to go balls in inside the enemy spawn and assume that you're going to get a ton of kills, but uh, if you play it right, you play a little bit defensive and pick your shots carefully, this gun is potentially one of the best medic guns in the entire game, sitting right next to the uh, Mon Dragon Storm, which is my favorite medic gun in my opinion. But I will certainly be giving this gun a shot. Uh, you're going to want to perform 15 kills with the auto loading 8.35 factory. Factory is the, the auto loading gun is pretty bad in my opinion, but this is going to be very easy. Anybody can get this done. Play some conquest, you'll get it done, and perform 75 heals. Another very extremely thing to do, I strongly recommend, normally I run the little bag for the medic, but if you want to get this challenge done quickly, I strongly recommend you use the big bag. That way you can heal up big groups of enemies, uh, especially on the map known as Fort Vox. That's going to be a, you're going to need a lot of medics on that map because it's very similar to Operation Locker for anybody that's played Battlefield 4. You're going to need to be healing your teammates up a lot, so you can get that done in probably 10 minutes tops if you're using the big bag. So I strongly recommend everybody give that a shot. Moving on, the next medic weapon we have is the RSC 1917 Factory. This is another very easy gun to unlock. You're going to want to perform 50 kills with the M1907 SL Sweeper. That is the automatic medic gun for the medic class. It is a very weak weapon. It very, deals very low damage. However, this is a close range beast. You're going to want to stay close range on this. Once again, guys, I recommend you stick to Fort Vox for close quarters on this gun. This gun absolutely shines on close quarters, uh, but uh, if you want to unlock that quickly, definitely stick to Fort Vox. Heal up your teammates with the uh, big bag, and you'll easily unlock this weapon. Moving on to the support class, I'm actually quite excited for this gun. The Chaw Chat Low Weight LMG. This is a very high damage low rate of fire LMG. This has a very similar damage model to the Scar H from Battlefield 4 who be for anyone that has played that game but for at the same time this gun has an extremely high visual recoil uh, moving towards the upwards position meaning there isn't any side to side recoil like most guns like the MG15 LMG but this gun is going to kick to the sky a lot. Uh, it's not going to necessarily be actual recoil where your bullets are going all over the place but it's visual recoil meaning your sights are going to be jumping up and down constantly but it's still a very high accurate weapon if you stick to close quarters pick your shots carefully once again this gun is in three shot four shot kill maximum at range but three shot at almost up to 50 meters 50 meters that is an absolute tank of a weapon you're going to want to perform 50 kills with the uh, low weight gun suppressive or the lewis gun suppressive sorry uh, i can unlock this gun in easily one game easily i love the suppressive lmg that's my favorite gun in the entire game uh, you're going to want to perform 75 resupplies once again stick to fort vox for this weapon it's pretty easy to unlock this uh, i can probably do this in operations or whatever game mode you prefer I strongly recommend doing this in operations though because it's the longest game mode in, in Battlefield 4 or Battlefield 1 sorry uh, so you're gonna want to stick to operations for unlocking this gun or conquest if you're a conquest beast that absolutely pulls tons of kills uh, you can easily unlock this weapon but it's really all up to you moving on you're gonna want to unlock the Chaw Chat telescopic I'm not a big fan of this weapon so I wouldn't really recommend using this gun but if you want to unlock it just for bragging rights you're going to want to perform 15 kills with the M1907 Bayonet Mercy uh, Telescopic. Uh, I've been able, I've actually think that's pronounced as Mercy something like that since it's a French gun I think. But uh, once again same exact damage model but you have a slightly more accuracy because of the telescopic uh, the sights on it makes it a little bit better in my opinion but still not a great weapon I'm not a fan of telescopic variants uh, so 15 kills with the M1907 and 10 kills with the mortar mortar is gonna be very easy for people that use the mortar I'm sorry guys I can't stand the mortar believe it or not I'm really bad with that thing I get nothing but hit markers so 10 kills with the mortar it's going to be pretty interesting for me, but I'll get it done regardless. I'll unlock all the weapons so you guys can get an idea of how they work. Moving on to the Scout class, we have the LaBelle Model 1886 Sniper. Absolute tank of a sniper. It's not that bad, but at the same time, it doesn't perform as amazing as I thought it would perform. It's still a great sniper, though, for those who like the Scout class. I'll get, I'll unlock it just to say that I have it and try it out a, few, a bit, but I'm still not a fan of the Scout class. Basically, this gun, you're going to want to in a round perform five headshots with the Russian 1895 Sniper. Very easy. Anybody can get that done. Perform 10 Periscope Spot Assist. Now, this is actually... Uh 
I had to think about it for a second because I didn't even realize that the Periscope uh, spotting uh, kit was actually part of the scout class, and then I realized it was actually there. Uh, so basically, that's a, the scouting class. That's the recon kit where you uh, look through the telescope, I guess, and you spot people. Very easy to get done. So honestly, anybody will get this done within like one game probably. Uh, moving on, you have the LaBelle Model 1886 Infantry variant. I'll definitely be using the Infantry variant just to because I prefer infantry snipers. I'm not a fan of sniping at long range. I can't stand it. Uh, so you're going to want to perform 50 kills with the Gur M95 Infantry. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Very easy to get done. Anyone can get that done easily. I'd probably get it done in like one game or two games because I'm not that good with the scout class. I use it just for fun. I'm not really a big fan of the scout class. You guys know this. Uh, after that, you're going to want to perform 20 spot flare assist. That is very easy. As long as you use your flares and you're not sitting in the back of the spawn with a sniper, you'll get this done in one game. So, moving on, guys. Lastly, I just want to talk a little bit about some updates that we can expect to see within Die They Shall Not Pass DLC. And it's actually pretty large. We have a substantial amount of updates that we can actually see coming in this DLC, They Shall Not Pass. One of them being gas grenades. That's right, you heard that right, guys. A gas nade nerf is currently in the works, if not already completed by the time I'm doing this commentary. And the changes that they made were that not only are they trying to, uh, this is actually coming in a later update, they're trying to fix the gas so that it doesn't kill you through the walls. The gas nade should not be penetrated trading through walls and that's something that they're working on but coming this Tuesday they're actually nerfing the gas grenades again so that way you only have one gas grenade and on top of that dice is working on the nade spam they've listened to the forums they've looked all over reddit and noticed that people were complaining about the gas nade spam and the grenade spam so they are actually fixing that and basically what they are doing is they're actually eliminating the gas nades and the grenade replenish from ammo boxes and ammo kits from the support classes and on top of that they are adding grenade regeneration meaning over time everyone's going to be regenerating a grenade over a certain period of time i believe the timer is 40 seconds to a minute that's just a guess guys i don't know the exact number but i will try to find it on reddit and if i find it i will certainly let you guys know in the comments box but can this be a good change for battlefield or can it be a bad one it's really dependent on how much people are able to regenerate their grenades so i think it's a good change I think at the same time, people are going to sit and wait for their grenades to recharge, which can lead to some bad gameplay. But for the most part, the grenade changes were already implemented into CTE, and I did get a chance to actually try this out, and it is actually very, very good, especially for maps like Fort Vox. I was very concerned that they weren't looking into changing the grenades again, and we'd have to deal with more grenade spam, as you guys have seen in Operation Metro from Battlefield 3 or Operation Locker from Battlefield 4. The grenade spam was a huge problem, especially the grenade launchers, so it's great to see that DICE is looking to fix this within the DLC because they know from all these previous battlefield titles with uh, infantry centric maps it was a serious problem but anyways guys that's pretty much it with the dlc what to expect the brand new maps elite classes new tanks new vehicles new weapons new patch notes i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you guys are excited uh, just as i am for the new dlc be sure to expect a new stream coming soon guys it's going to be happening tomorrow, especially since I'm going to be trapped in my house because of this upcoming blizzard uh, happening in New York City. Two feet of snow scheduled for me, but hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel, and it is your boy Lycan AK, signing out. Peace!